Hey y'all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller recruiting in yoga pants part two of our stupid recruiter questions uh, little mini series here. So last week we had a chat about tell me about yourself and how to answer that question, why recruiters ask that question, and what is the best way as a job seeker to address it. So if you've not checked out the first video in this little mini series, go ahead and check that out. I will link to it up above. Uh, but it's a great kind of little two part. I wanted to address both of these things and I didn't think I could do it in 10 minutes. So I split it up for y'all. <laughs> okay, so this week we are digging into, tell me, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't even know where I'm going to be tomorrow, let alone five years from now. My answers definitely changed over the years too. I promise you that. <laughs> Let's see. I'm 47, five years. Of, oh, yeah, it's still too young to retire. Damn it. Okay. Anyway, ask me again in five years. Okay. So I don't know where we got the five year number. It's definitely a question that I've been trained to ask my entire recruiting career. <laughs> and I never, I think some of us, you know, kind of stumbled into recruiting and didn't know any better. And thank God made all of our mistakes before the internet or most of our mistakes. I make new and more interesting mistakes these days. But, you know, I don't know that it ever occurred to most of us when we were young baby recruiters to push back and say, I, why am I asking this? What are we doing with this information? <laughs> so it's kind of like, is there a purpose? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I am happy to report I did start asking that question, uh, thankfully, several years ago and actually got some good answers from some of my mentors and, and folks that I've learned from. So it is less for me, my perspective, of course, it is less about where you're going to be in five years. I, I, I'm not, I, I'm not asking you to bust out a crystal ball. I'm not asking you to like, tell me your exact career plan and life plan, because we all know things could change. You could fall in love. You could fall out of love. You can have babies. You can get your babies up and out of the house. I mean, five years is a long time. We've been in a pandemic for two years. And doesn't it feel like 20? So five years? Seriously? I hope I'm allowed to leave my house in five years. That's where I'm at these days. Okay? Thanks, COVID. All right. So the purpose from my recruiter point of view of this question is twofold. Number one, I want to understand your motivators. I want to kind of understand, you know, as you're thinking about the next step in your career, as you're thinking about potentially changing jobs, what are the things that are important to you? Do you have a clear, you know, kind of long-term career goal? Like I'm absolutely headed towards management. I absolutely want to pivot to, you know, a different field or a different industry, whatever. Again, this is one of those cases where there are no wrong answers. It's your career you get to design it and define it. I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong or you shouldn't want to do that or that targets out of reach. Who the hell am I to say that to you? So as a recruiter, I simply want to understand as much as you're willing to share and as best as you've defined, what are your motivators? The second part of that, it's really the other side of that same coin. I want to make sure that I'm able to use some of those indicators to help target the right position. So make sure you're connecting to the right role, you're talking to the right hiring managers, you're interviewing for the right thing. And then I'm also gonna use that on you when it comes time to close you, okay? When I'm making you an offer and I say, now, here's your amazing offer. I got you all the money, cause I don't play with people's money, okay? I make good offers, anyway. Here's the amazing money that I got you. Here's the great offer I got you. I beat your expectations. You told me A, B, and C was really important to your personal and professional growth. I'm so happy to tell you that this role offers a path to A, B, and C. So I'm taking down that information. I'm thinking about the things you've told me is important to you. I want to make sure it is my job as your professional career matchmaker 
to be mindful of the things that matter to you. Okay, so that's a little bit about how to, or, or the why, I guess, why recruiters are asking these, what can be perceived as kind of invasive questions. Okay, now how do you as a job seeker answer it? It kind of a little bit in some ways, maybe, ties back to the elevator pitch that we talked about we covered it in last week's video. We had a quick chat about it, um, as well as the elevator pitch video, which I will link to above for you as well. So you can check that one out when you get a uh, get a chance. But the the goal here again is for you to provide information that you think is valuable for the recruiter to know, and that helps get whatever next step you want. So couple of ways you can approach this. Actually, there's like probably infinite ways to approach it. But the two things I would recommend, you get to decide which you like best or a combination thereof, but two directions I would potentially go with this question. Number one, I am really enjoying what I'm doing today. What I've learned about this role, this team, this company, whatever, is definitely in line with what I see myself doing in the short term. I haven't thought much beyond this specific role to be very transparent with you. I'm just really excited to see this one through and learn as much as I can. And I'm sure there's gonna be opportunity for growth and, and scaling up my work and maybe getting a bigger scope. But right now my focus is on this. There is not a thing in the world wrong with that question or that answer, not a thing. You can absolutely answer it in that way, if you just are either A, not sure, or B, it ain't none of your damn business. I'll give you an example, okay? Let's say your goal, you, you know this, and your closest friends and advisors know this, your goal is to go make your bank in big tech, get that money, get that stock vested, and then you're gonna go start your own company. Do you want to say that out loud to a recruiter? Maybe not, because not everything you tell the recruiter, <laughs> but some things, a lot of things you tell a recruiter will go back to the hiring manager. Like we are capturing that data and getting it all together and making our story and telling the hiring manager. That may not be something you're ready to share. So don't, it's none of my business. Now, we don't necessarily want to hire people who are, you know, checking their watch and bouncing within six months. Like, that wouldn't be ideal. But things happen. Life happens. Situations change. Perspectives change. Priorities change. If you're not ready to share that long-term plan or you haven't defined the long-term plan, I'm just focused on right now. I'm focused on the next couple of years. I'm focused on getting this role and learning every single thing I can and understanding what a career path could look like. That's totally okay. Now, for those of you who do have a plan or a goal or an idea of what that would look like, it's okay to share that too. And I'll give you an example. This is how I would answer the question if I were asked this question today. So right now, I'm focused on you know, just figuring out my next step. I think this role, this team, this company, whatever is great for these reasons. However, long-term, you're asking me, where do I see myself in five years? I'm happy to share with you kind of my long-term vision. I am thinking of a couple of distinct paths for myself. I am thinking about potential management. Do I want to move into full-fledged people management? Do I want to be, you know, that, do I want to be a recruiting manager? That is one option that I have not completely taken off the table. The other direction I may go if I were to stray off of the path I've been on for 22 years is maybe some kind of a program management, you know, focused on talent acquisition, focused on recruiting, things like that. So I have a lot of fun with things like employee branding and, and networking and things like that. So is that a path I could explore in the future? Possibly. So that's how I'm thinking about my career long term. Right now, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. I'm very excited about this role that we're talking about. But here's a couple of options that I might want to think about down the road. I've now given my recruiter 
a fair and transparent look into my, my career mind and where my head's at and what I'm thinking about. And that recruiter now has the ability, should they choose to, to use that information to make sure that we're targeting the right role for me and that they can sell me on the growth. So again, hey, Amy, here's a great offer. We love you. We think you're great. By the way, you mentioned leadership. That was really important to you. You were looking at possibly moving into a recruiting management role in the future. Wanted to let you know that over the last six months, we've promoted three recruiters into management positions. Uh, there's definitely a runway for that. There's growth if you want it. Something I would encourage you to talk to your manager about if and when you decide to join us. But wanted you to know we heard you. We're thinking about your goals. And we want to make sure that you feel confident that you can reach those goals here at ABC Company. Who wouldn't be interested and intrigued by that offer? Hmm? So... That is my guidance. So for my recruiter friends that are watching, keep that in mind. You can you can actually leverage this information to make sure that you're doing right by your candidates. And for my job seeker friends, my beloved job seeker community, I hope this has helped shed a little bit of light onto why recruiters say the silly things that they say sometimes. There really is a method to our madness if we're doing our job right. All right, y'all, I hope that helps. Be sure to check out part one if you have not already seen it. Come back again for part two. And we will see you next week.